What's going on, YouTube? We getting it back in, baby. You know who it is. LTGB, baby. Let the games begin. And we back off in the gym. In the gym. <laughs> nah, man. Um, As you can see by the title, today, guys, today is day 10 of Lane Norton's PH3. So, with that being said, um, day 10 we have squat, bench, and legs, okay? Um, so, we're jumping it off with some squats. As you can see, guys, I'm just warming up right now. I'm working up to um, three sets of seven with 360. And while I'm at it, I just want to go ahead and stress the importance of warming up. Um, making sure that you include a proper warm-up with all exercises I mean it can be it doesn't have to be as in-depth if you're doing like isolation stuff so if you're just doing arms and stuff but for compound movements squat deadlift and bench I can't stress how important it is to have a proper warm-up um you know every time I get ready to squat every time I get ready to deadlift or something like that bench I always like to foam roll, I always like to do some mobility stuff, I always like to get the muscles firing, get everything working, man, get everything lubricated, man. I don't know some of you guys, you know, you know, y'all out there, y'all, you don't just run up in the, in the cooch, man, you don't just run up in it without, you know, taking your time to caress that baby, man, you gotta get it nice and warmed up and get it lubricated. I mean, you don't just run up in there straight off rip, do you? Or, I mean, maybe some of you do, but I mean... <laughs> You know, you, you're going to find out it's not the best approach, you know. You might get some uh, skin burn, some rug burn, something. <laughs> but nah, anyways. But in relation to what I'm referring to as far as warming up, you know, you can be one of those guys that come into the gym and just walk straight over to the squat rack, you know, without warming up, without doing what you need to do. But as you increase your weight and as you slowly increase the intensity and the volume at which you your workout sessions are your workouts are you know you will eventually run into complications man and you know i speak from experience you know i've done that i was one of those type of guys that would just come in you know run over straight to bench i might do one set of 135 and then as soon as i'm done with that just put on my working weight and, and start trying to bang out reps man and you know, I ended up straining a, I ended up straining one of my pecs, man. And you know, like I was saying, you when you start lifting, you can kind of get away with it at first. But you know, nowadays I somewhere take, I sometimes take up to about 20 minutes. You know, just doing mobility stuff, just making sure that I'm properly warmed up for my lift and whatever I'm getting ready to do. Because I don't, I do this for longevity. I don't do this, you know just to come in there to see how much weight i can lift and who's watching to try to impress nobody nah man this you know bodybuilding you know weightlifting, whatever you know uh, it should be for a longevity okay so you know you guys out there you know don't 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 be afraid to to you know warm up do your mobility spend like 20 minutes 30 minutes however long it takes until you feel ready you know so that's just my tip for you guys uh, out there if you're not incorporating any any warm-ups definitely start doing that okay all right so back to the workout as you can see i've progressed on to the bench um you know warming up here that was 225 now with my working sets i'm doing three sets of seven with 245 yeah 245 now my projected max has decreased um just for the simple fact that this is probably in this video it was probably uh nine to ten weeks i believe post my uh pec strain injury my last pec strain injury so i you know with that being said i had lost some strength also i changed up my grip a little bit i brought my grip in a little bit more um and so just the whole dynamic of my lift has changed so with that being said um i brought my projected max down to 315 now i do feel a lot stronger so it might be above 315 but lane norton incorporates what's called a rep test which will kind of determine your one rm so you do a rep test every four weeks and depending on what you get you know you might get a new projected one rm so we'll see how that goes 
um, when it comes time for that. So after I do my three sets of seven with 245, um, we go ahead and start working on some of these legs. They go my boy Muscle Man Marcus. Um, just for the hell of it, man, I'm gonna put his link in the description. You guys can check him out too, man. That's that's like my brother right there. You know, he out here doing his thing too. So I'm gonna put the link for his channel in the description as well. Y'all, you can check him out. So we did leg extensions. Um, you know, nothing, nothing too fancy there. Uh, it was just two sets of eight to ten reps, and then I moved on over to lying, um, lying leg curls. And same thing, two sets of eight to ten reps, so nothing spectacular. Um, man, I don't know if you guys saw it, but this Smith machine, I swear it was a death trap, okay? Like when I picked it up, the weight started wobbling on my back, and I was like, yo, what the fuck is going on here? It's like the machine was old and you know, just kind of raggedy, man. I, I don't know what's what's going on with this gym, but they need to go ahead and replace that shit ASAP. Um so I did five sets no excuse me four sets of six to eight reps um with uh three wheels on each side um for the calf raise then did i say three sets four sets four sets of six to eight okay um and then what you see in here um is blood flow restrictive training i don't know if you guys have seen my last video but um basically you're just re restricting the venous you still have um blood flowing through your arteries but you're just restricting the venous flow of the of the blood so the blood is not leaving the muscle essentially it's going into the muscle but it's not leaving it so um if you're not too familiar with it go ahead and check out uh lane norton and he gives a pretty good description about you know what blood flow restrictive training or occlusion training is okay so um getting into it for the calf raises man i tell you it is that shit is a bad motherfucker, man. Your calves are on fire after this. You do four sets of 20, and then you do uh, three sets of 10 after that. So you do a set of 20, take a 30 second rest, a set of 10, then you take 30 seconds again rest, and then you do two more sets of 10 after that. And then after you finish all four sets, that's when you release the band. Yeah, so if you're looking to up your intensity on some calves, Give that motherfucker a go ASAP. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that's the video. If you like it, do me a favor. Hit that like button below. Comment, share. But most importantly, subscribe and stay tuned.